twenty hundred and eight. But that's not what that's not what the real time is. We know this. We know this, right? Time looking at it on a clock based system is I don't I won't say foolish, it's good for keeping schedule, but it's really time to hit arms. That's what it's really time for. So I think you're well aware of I mean honestly you could probably predict what the arm workout is gonna look like. Triceps first followed by biceps. Partially, just because I prefer it. Um, actually, almost, well, I could say that it's for two reasons. One thing that I'll notice, uh, I don't, I've never really done biceps before triceps. I'm sure I have a while ago, but not so much as of late. And by as of late, I mean like the last few years. But one thing I'll notice whenever I do the sort of superset style of arm day, where I do like a set or two sets of triceps and then two sets of biceps and go back and forth, back and forth that way instead of doing all triceps then all biceps is when my biceps are freely fucking pumped like let's say I go back and forth like three times already when I'm doing tricep pushdowns with my biceps like nearly fully pumped <laughs> like my biceps basically like act as a fucking spacer to the point where the tension isn't even really on my triceps anymore at the top of a heavy pushdown. Like my biceps are almost acting as like a little buffer because my arm just physically can't bend anymore. So, you know, if I could say an actual legitimate reason, triceps without a bicep pump will probably give you more tension in the stretch position. Just so I guess if you're if you're not running into your biceps then you don't have to worry about that. But eventually that may become an issue. And then it also just feels kind of funky. So I've always done tries before buys. Partially just because I like it and it makes sense. But then also in kind of a jokey sort of way. You should always try something before you buy it. <laughs> I always thought that was the cheesiest thing ever when I hear that. I don't remember who said it. But I remember watching some kind of lifter video or someone said that. Oh, shit. But, you know, pushdowns of a few varieties, and then curls. And, um, you know, it's not like there's a specific routine. You know, I am just sort of doing what I know is going to feel good for me. But, in the same sense, I could, like, every time I pick a movement, I could try to find the most elaborate, like, reasonings and explain myself. Where I'm like, okay, I want to start off with... Uh, cross body cable extensions because I really want to focus on the contracted part of the of the movement and you know really get a good you know connection with my with my central nervous system and my triceps because if you haven't really done any working sets you're not going to be able to load them effectively and you know activate your fibers um, <laughs> I was about to say something mean I was <laughs> okay, I'll just say it, but I I intend this totally as a joke and then in between sets. I'm going to suck up my binky. <laughs> yeah, <in> <laughs> oh my god. No, no, no. So, sure. I could come up with a reason for every movement that I do in this whole workout. You know, I could say, all right, I want to start off with straight bar pushdowns because I want a movement that can really load my long head and the, you know, and get a solid contraction at the bottom or you know, I could make up some bro sciencey shit which would like sound like it makes sense but you know, I kinda feel like a lot of people's explanations of their workout it's not necessarily real you know like someone could do a workout where they you know they like doing heavy incline dumbbell prench, prench press and then they like cable flies and then they like machine press they made good gains on it <laughs> they can go hard they progressively overload, they get a good pump every time, it's a good workout for them, you know? Uh, and that's most of the extent of it, right? Like, they get the idea, right? Mechanical tension, maybe some drop sets, um, you know, fascial stretch, all sorts of buzzwords. But I think a lot of people are just like, this is how I like to do it, or it's just, I'm gonna go hard. And then, if they were to be asked, like, why are you working out this way? It's almost like people come up with a reason after the fact 
you know, it's like, so I kind of feel like, now there are some things which I do very intentionally, uh, in which, you know, actually do make sense. Like, whenever I do quads, uh, I've always been doing at least two sets of leg extensions before squats, before anything, just because, for one thing, it is going to warm me up. My quads are going to feel better when I squat, when they are a little bit pumped and activated. And my knees are going to feel warmed up so they're not so, you know, cold. They've been exposed to some tension and they're, you know, ready to load up a lot of weight. But, you know, without saying any of that, I could also say I like doing leg extensions first because it feels good when I squat later. Which reasoning is better, you know? So, uh, don't get too lost in the jargon of explaining your workouts. Like, half the time, if I see somebody doing something, you know, I don't see it too much. I've kind of been, I feel like as a lifter, I've been around a while. So, I've seen most different variations of movements. I'm not going to say I've seen them all. But whenever I'd see some new shit, you know, go up to them, whatever lifter or whatever size they may be, ask them, hey, what, why are you doing it like that? Or like, you like doing it like that? Kind of ask them to explain themselves, and usually they're going to say, yeah, you know, I get a really good burn on like the outer peak of my bicep. You know, they don't have to say, yeah, well, I'm, I can really contract my brachialis more when I do it like, like they're going to tell me, oh, I can feel a really good burn like this. And I'll say, all right, let me try that shit. Do a set. Damn, man, yeah, that does burn. You know? So, really, I think the bro sciencey guy who does, I'm not saying in all instances, of course, right? but you know, if you do something that burns, you're in a reasonable rep range, you're progressively overloading, you're fatigued, you're pumped, I say you're good. I say you're freaking good. So, gym closes in exactly... 75 minutes, one hour and 15 minutes. It's gonna take me a minute to put all my shit away and actually get in there. But I think that'll give me about an hour for arms. And, you know, I don't really need much more than that. By the time I've done maybe eight or so sets of triceps and biceps, and maybe I'll do more of tries, or maybe I'll do less of buys, or, you know, whatever the um, amount of sets for each body part ends up being, but it'll be about an hour max without too much dilly-dallying. You can be in the gym for three hours. I don't think you're really having an efficient time. You know? Now, in, his, in no way am I saying don't go to the gym for three hours, but it may be a better use of your time to say, all right, I'm gonna focus, do my lift first, and then, you know, prep a meal and just hang out. That's how I do it. At least when I've got the time. But let's uh, put in a guess. What do you think? What's the first movement going to be for triceps? I don't even know yet. So this is really up in the air. Did you guess pushdowns with two plates strapped to the side? Because if you did, there's no prize, but it, just personal satisfaction. So, controlled set. I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can because honestly, look, even though this is like the stack plus two plates, since it's on this sort of setup with all the pulleys, it's not that much. Like, it's not so much weight that my body's literally being lifted off the ground. But it's still enough for a solid set. But since I'm pretty strong with it, for the first maybe five or six or however many I can, I am going to fucking hold it, squeeze hard, and then do some pretty controlled reps before I get into the range of, you know, nasty partials. Uh, 
Okay, let's take one second. Oh my God. Okay. A few more just like that. Let's do some machine dips. Okay. The last two sets were pretty slow and controlled for the first few reps. With this set, I'm going to be a bit quicker with them. Like, when I sit in the leg extension, I can do a set where I go slow, squeeze, hold it, back down, squeeze, hold it. And it's a good set. But after doing one of those, which I do like, I'll switch over to just doing reps as quick as I fucking can. Within reason, of course. If I had like, you know, half the stack of weight and I tried to go on as quick as I can, I'd just be fucking jerking the weight around. But if you have a lot of weight with some movements, I don't see the problem in doing some burnout style reps. So I think that's what I'll do with this one. And then we can do that. Let's do a drop set. I think that's my cue to fix something else. So I don't want to do skull crushers too heavy. It's probably going to mess with my elbows a little bit. Um, I'm not saying my elbows feel bad now, but I kind of just know whenever I really push skull crushers, something about the angle, it's just a lot of fucking like torquey motion all in here, which I mean, fuck man, you just don't need. But I do love the feeling of a skull crusher. Super good stretch on the long head. So instead of going as heavy as I can, I'll just do one plate. And since that's a little bit light to the point where I'll be doing a lot of reps, I'll pre-exhaust with rope pushdowns first. So this will sort of be a super slash drop set. You know, X amount of reps with the rope. I don't even really have to train to failure over there. Like that's not the point. The point of the rope portion is just to pre-exhaust my triceps and then really bring it home here on these, um, uh, I guess you'd call this a French press, right? Like skull crusher on an incline. Whatever you call it, it's gonna feel good. So let's hit the shit. Right after I pick a good song. <sighs> bad i think let's do one more so i like this i am going to do this 
movement more often. But there's a machine, which is this exact style of fucking movement. It's like a normal sort of upright seat with a easy bar bar on a lever, overhead extension. It feels so fucking good. But this is this is pretty close. So I think I need to do this more often. I need more long head activation. So I think one more here. Maybe two. I'm gonna take this set with the rope a little bit harder. I had a bit too much left in the tank when I got to the uh, the easy bar on the last set. One more here. Triceps are almost done. Same thing, but with the straight bar this time. I'm not sure if I want to do another set of um, machine dips or not. I need a moment to ponder. I always skimp on showing you the warm up. So, in no fucking way imaginable do I stop doing triceps, come over to the dumbbells, and just grab like the 75s or the 80s or whatever right off the rip. That's fucking nuts. For one thing, stupid. I'm not warm. What if I have like a minor bicep thing that I can't really feel just right now by flexing, but as soon as I grab the 80s and rip one, yikes. But also, you're just not fucking strong without a warm up, you know? Like before, if I were to be, let's just say I could do a set of 315 safely. Let's say I knew for a fact I wasn't gonna pull anything, I wasn't gonna get hurt, and I could just grab it cold yep. Yep. and do a normal set. Completely fresh. I might, I don't know how many reps I'll get, but I would get more after a proper warm up with maybe a little bit of like cable fly activators. Not real working sets, but just cross body presses just to fucking get the muscle active. So that's what I'm doing here. Instead of jumping straight to whatever the working set is gonna be for the first set, I'm gonna play around with the 30s, then maybe the 45s, then maybe the 55s, and you know, go up and reasonable increments and with each weight you know I'm kind of feeling around I'm like okay how do my forearms feel how do my biceps feel does everything feel good like right now if I could tell maybe I had some kind of like bicep tendonitis or something was funky and I was like okay no chance I do really heavy curls today I might just move on to something else and instead of trying to do a heavy set of dumbbell curls you know I could just do some well, light dumbbell curls or something else. But this is like my fucking checklist before I take flight. I want to make sure my landing gear works and my fucking tire flaps are flapping so that when I actually, you know, load up a ton of weight, 
I'm not going to get fucked. So I'm not going to show every little warm-up set. Let's cut to the big one, whatever that ends up being. Let's, uh, let's throw the 70s around. I wouldn't mind the 75s, but one of them is like kind of bent and wonky, and it's kind of just like triggering my OCD. So 70s, straps, I'm going to try to go as nuts as possible. drop to the 65s for this next one. Let's do some machine curls. This kind of machine, I really fucking like. If I had to pick a seated curl machine versus like a machine preacher, fuck, I mean, for the most part, deep. But really, it'll just kind of depend on which one feels more natural for my wrists. Because I've used preachers, which feel fucking awesome. <clears throat> and I've used seated curls like this, which kind of fucking well, don't. And part of that is just sort of going to be up to chance based on your fucking biomechanics and whatever else. But a lot of the time, if it sort of supinates, yeah, I'm sure you guys like that technical term, if it really twists my hand upward up here, then sometimes at the bottom it can have a lot of tension on my wrist. And then even coming up in the curl, I can kind of just feel it just kind of pinching some stuff. It's not cool. But if it does feel good for you, Spam them hard. And if it feels like shit, pick something else. I know this is basic fucking logic. That's nothing groundbreaking. But why do a machine if your body doesn't really, I kind of want to say, like, jive with it, you know? Like, for me, I'm trying to stay away from machine chest press because I get so much front delta activation. I still do it a little bit just because I like it, but I am trying to back off because I know that... Either the tightness or my poor form. Whenever I do machine chest press, I always get a lot of front delts. Whereas if I do cable flies and um, like dumbbell incline, it's like all chest, like no front delt. So keep a uh, keep in mind that what you're working should be what's being worked. And if anything else is coming to play, is coming into play, or if anything else is fucking like feeling a bit off, then maybe just pick a new machine. But full stack, let's get fucking rough. Those first few reps felt a little too light. I think let's do some preacher curls and then come back. Good set, but I don't want to do another one right now. Oh yeah. Mm. 
That's fucking heavy. I think let's uh, drop the ten to do one more. Make a drop set. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. I think one more just like that. Biceps are done. I'm not sure if size-wise it's the most pumped my biceps have ever been, but they haven't burned like this for a fucking while. I haven't really done easy bar preachers for a while though, so maybe this was the ticket, but let's freaking pose down. I'm excited to see how we're looking under this fucking tank, or in a tank rather. All right, let's make sure I'm actually in fucking focus this time. Yeah. I was posing down right here for shoulders, and now it's fucking blurrier than shit. Actually, let me, let me just do this. There we go. Okay. So, what do you think? Do I look pumped under this thing? My sleeves are fucking tight, even though this is supposed to be kind of a baggier shirt. So, I'd go so far as to say, yes. That would be a prediction which I could make and feel pretty confident about. Well, so, let's see if I'm right. And also, <laughs> me guessing if I'm pumped is kind of like insider trading. I can already fucking feel it. You know, I already know I'm pumped. I think I kind of just say it as a question to maybe build suspense. <laughs> uh, but come on. Does the sun rise in the morning and set in the evening? Right? Does water fall downwards? Is Sam going to end his lift with a pump? All of these are fucking... You know, questions which we know the answer to. We already know the answer. Even without fucking flexing, just standing here, I look like a fucking meathead. Oh my god. I fucking love it. Let me make sure I'm still fucking in focus. There we go, good. Oh my god. The bulk is fucking bulking. Oh, dude. I don't even want to, like, fully extend my fucking arms to do a crucifix because my biceps feel so fucking tight. I feel like I'm going to pull something. That is awesome. That is most certainly fucking sick. Now, in terms of how I got so pumped, uh, biceps was kind of fast-paced, honestly, because I wasn't going insanely heavy like I usually do. Like, when I do curls of... um like 85 pounds like when I'm in the, I think this was two on days ago or something I was doing like set of 85 set of 80s set of 75s I was taking a few minutes in between but since today I was just in the 70 75 range for those really heavy sets I only needed like a minute or so of rest if that but that may have kind of contributed to the fucking bicep portion 
The tries are fucking pumped to hell, too. Oh, my God. I was about to say I love a lat spread with an arm pump. But I love every fucking pose with an arm pump. Holy sh... All right, this is a really good one. Oh. Oh. What other fucking arm poses are there? Yeah. A little callback with that one. I haven't made that joke for fucking months. But... Fuck, man. Dude. Like... There is no contact of my fingers. I'm, I'm reaching as hard as I fucking can. My fingers are no way I'm gonna fucking touch my shoulders. Oh my goodness. Usually I would say, okay, let's get in the car and leave, but I don't wanna stop looking at myself in the mirror. So let's just have a little, um, a little chit chat right here. So, uh, uh. You know what's kind of fun for me is this is the gym that I pretty much started lifting in. You know, of course, I've been around to fucking all sorts of gyms all over the place, but this is the one where I came in, you know, junior in high school, still doing my really crazy high volume workouts. Oh my goodness. You know what I, ah, oh man, fuck. Back, um, just due to the nature of fucking posting all these videos, I've got to bust out the tripod. I was a bit of a tripod hater back when I started lifts and I didn't want to record anything because in my mind I'm like why the fuck would I need to record any of this stuff but man would it have some fucking historical value you know I've still got old pictures of me like just posing down like and if I didn't have a tripod I'm doing like a side chest where I'm like holding my phone in the mirror trying to get the angle right dude I'd have so many more progress pictures if I had a tripod back then so maybe word of the wise to anybody who feels like they're still in the early stages of your lifting journey or if you're in the fucking deeper stages too it doesn't matter uh i say get a fucking tripod for your pose downs and uh this might be a little bit of a niche recommendation but one of the one of my buddies nathan uh i don't know if he still does it now but he would always like set it he'd like turn on the camera like hit the timer and then like do a pose and wait for the camera to fucking like click a shot. Dude, that is so much fucking trouble. If you're posing down, or post lift if you want to track your sort of pumped progress, set up your tripod, just take a video, and then run through fucking poses. And then afterwards, if you want to like suck a picture out of it, just pause the video and fucking screenshot it, man. That's how I like it. Oh, well, at least as of fucking late. But... I think that's all there is to say, man. Fucking arms are totally destroyed. I got a big day tomorrow. Big stinking day. I think by the, by the time I post this video, it will be after the fact. But Arnold weekend, this is going to be big. Big as in just a fucking... I've been saying this every video. But just a big ass fucking get together of lifters of all sorts. All styles and trades and locations you gotta love it so let's get in the car arms 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 have been destroyed arms have been destroyed you know i was um i was kind of like half considering doing forearms as well at the end but I kind of just said, eh, oh, whatever. It's okay. I'm okay with just an arm day today. So, tomorrow more. Oh, this is going to be a packed Friday through Sunday. So, tomorrow morning, headed to, um, which I guess, I feel weird talking about when I'm going to do shit because in the video it's going to be delayed. But tomorrow, we're headed to lift at uh, American Barbell bright and early way earlier than I usually would but after uh, after a full day at the Arnold I'm gonna be freaking or not just me I'm sure we're all gonna be freaking dead so training beforehand is probably gonna be the best bet so I'm gonna make sure to be nice and full of food tonight so that I can wake up relatively full of carbs it's usually the last thing I want to do is train really early um, like 
sort of first thing in the morning. Uh, but that seems terrible. Honestly, if I was totally strapped and I had to train right in the morning, just because that's what my schedule was, you make it work. It's not going to be that bad. But usually I would say I prefer training more noon to evening-ish. Because by then I will have fucking just eaten a ton of food. And I'll just kind of feel fuller, stronger, more energized. That's going to be a solid back day. So in the next, I would assume the next few days, that'll be on, I think, the hostile YouTube channel. Uh, whatever lifts we end up doing. And hopefully we actually get to see some other characters. You got to remember... <laughs> All the lifters who are, you know, flying in from all over the country, like all over the world, you know, coming to the Arnold, they got to train somewhere. And if they're going to the expo during the day, they're probably looking for some badass gyms in the morning and at night. So I'm sure the pros gym, actually in Columbus, any time before probably seven o'clock, and any time after probably five o'clock, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be. Like packed to the gills, so we're kind of outsourcing a little bit, driving a little bit further out of the way. But yeah, that'll be fucking fun. So I just gotta make sure to pack up all my food and bring a few changes of clothes because we're going straight from the gym to the hostile booth. I guess I mean I think by the time this video gets posted, it will be after the fact. But 5:45, you can't miss it. It's gonna be fucking huge. You know, there's kind of an array of like booth sizes. The hostile one is pretty fucking big, so I think that'll be fun. I can't wait to see all the fucking other characters too. Like it's uh I don't know, it's it's like surreal seeing somebody who you've only ever seen on your phone in person. And then they're also bigger in person too. It's just fucking fun. So I'm excited for that. Until then, I gotta focus on getting home and chowing down. In terms of the post-workout meal, I have no earthly idea what it's gonna be, but I'm sure it's gonna be full of carbs. Uh, maybe some, maybe a steak. I don't know. I'll think about it. I will freaking think about it. But not sure exactly. But I'm pretty certain I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning at like 2:61. So. Nice and heavy for the fucking expo. Not 300, not 310 like some other characters, but 260. So that's a reasonably substantial amount of mass. That's what, a little more than an eighth of a ton? Or just about an eighth of a ton? I can stand behind that for sure. For freaking sure. But yeah. In terms of the length of the bulk, I say this all the time, but I'll just say it again. To be determined, you know? If I'm... You know, floating around like 264 in a month, then I'm going to keep going. And if in two months I'm floating around like 267, I'm going to keep going. If three months I'm floating around 270, I'm going to keep fucking going, you know, because I'm still gaining weight. And as long as I'm not putting on too much fat, I'm going to keep fucking packing on size. Now, if in, you know, one month I'm like 263, and then, you know, eating as much food as I can you know, realistically get down in another month, I'm still 263 and I can't, I'm not really gaining any more weight. Then something like that is going to kind of be my cue to say, all right, I think this bulk is over. I think this bulk is just about done uh, because you know, the whole point is to be growing. Now I do think there is some benefit in sort of staying bulked for a little bit because you got to remember when you start eating a freaking ton of food, compared to just you know, a scrappy amount, like whatever you eat on a, you know, maintaining sort of calorie intake or a deficit, then you're going to, your weight is going to spike, but that spike is not all muscle, not even close, right? It's really a ton of water instantly, water and carbs, followed by some fat and some muscle. So if in two months you jump your weight up by 30 pounds, and then you say, holy crap, I gained 30 pounds. I'm going to start dieting down. <laughs> You'll probably diet down to maybe, I mean, I'm not, I can't say for sure, but not much heavier than you were at the start. So even if my weight does plateau at like 260 something, 
I'm still going to hold that weight for a little bit, uh, just to, in a sense, sort of get used to it. And then I'll be able to say, all right, I think it's time to trim down. Drop the calories to maintenance, to deficit, just right around there. And then you know, as many months pass as I need to get back down to a pretty lean body mass and say, all right, I'm hungry again. I want to start bulking. And then I'll keep going. So it's not necessarily like a, you know, I'm going to do this for X amount of weeks, and then I'll do this for X amount of weeks. Like it's not like a pre-programmed thing. It's, um, it's sort of just going based on the results that I you know, can see, right? If you're making gains, I say, why stop? And if you're not making gains, maybe change something. I'm sure I could just, like the answer is clear. If I want to keep gaining weight, I'll just eat, just eat more food. Simple. And for the most part, that is usually what I say. But after like a six month bulking period and I really just like the difficulty of getting in that amount of calories as time progresses on the bulk. For one thing, I am eating more over time because I want to gradually be eating more and more calories to keep gaining weight. Uh, it gets progressively more difficult and I can't just keep eating calories until I'm eating like 7,000 a day or even 6,000 a day. That's really pushing it for me. I can't get that down after a few months. So I'll get to a point where I'm like, I just can't eat anymore. It's been six months. It's been X amount of months. Let's cut down and start again. But there's always a progression because this is how a successful bulking and cutting loop should look. If you do it multiple and multiple times, it should be, here's your baseline weight. And then you go, here's, let's say you're 200 pounds here. You bulk up to 230. You cut down, you're as lean as you were in the beginning, but now you're 210. That's a 10 pound gain. You're above where you started. You do it again, bulk up to 240, cut down to 220. Ooh, another 10 pounds. Now that's not necessarily like a consistent poundage per bulk or whatever. I'm just saying every bulk is heavier than last time and every cut is also heavier than last time. Right? So over time, the idea is bulk up, cut down, bulk up, cut down bulk up, cut down. But if you look at the trend, it's consistently positive. So that's sort of what I've been rocking with as of late. And this bulk seems to be going rather well. Because in my last few, like, I don't remember exactly how my sort of weight has gone on all my bulks. Because I started really bulking up and cutting down at like 200-ish. 200 was like my peak weight before. And now, I think the first one I got to like 230, and then I cut down to like 210. And then I was up in like the 240 range, then down to like 27, I don't remember, 220 maybe. And it just kind of kept going up and up and up. And then now, bulked up, floating around the, um, at the end of it, I could foresee the high 260 range, just based on the trend that's been going on for now, and how it sort of looks like it's going to keep progressing. So... Me lean, I'm not exactly sure what my weight's going to be, but after this bulking phase, when I get down to like the two low 230s to 230, that should be a pretty freaky look. Should be a pretty freaky look. And that makes me excited. I get excited to think about how I'm going to look when I'm diced. You know, when I, um, I haven't really been posting on the Instagram because I'm more prone to you know, post it just a still photo when I'm lean because it's just cooler and more impressive. Uh, but when I look at those leaner pictures on the Insta, and I'm doing like a side tricep with a shoulder pump and I can see my striations, there's just veins everywhere. Or I'm doing like a like a bicep shot, like my abs are out. That's fucking badass. And I get excited to cut down because I know that's what's at the end of it. But in the same sense, you can't just jump the gun and you know get straight to that final destination. There's a journey that you have to go through to get there, and that's gaining size. So um, I think it's been, it's gotten a little bit better. We're not, um, I feel, and this is just sort of my, like, a, my observation of, like, Instagram shorts and, like, TikTok posts about fitness, so probably not the best source of information. But I felt like for a while there, last year and earlier, People were really focused on fucking getting lean. Like I'd see a lot of um, like fitness 
sort of what's the what's the word I'm thinking of? Kind of like news, not news, but like fitness videos where guys are like talking about drama, or whatever. And a lot of them are talking about like how it was kind of a not a trend, but it was kind of happening a lot. People were just jumping straight to like starvation diets. They were just trying to get super lean before even really bulking up or building up a baseline physique. As of late, I think that's, you know, people have gotten better at that. We're kind of understanding you got to put some mass on and then show it off in the cutting phase later, which I think is very good. It's a much better approach than just fucking you know, trying to dice down with nothing to show for it. Um, what was I going to say? But yeah, so part of that also is you kind of have to have a little bit of a disconnect from your current state of being and be able to look at your situation almost from the third person as if you're an outside observer and be able to understand like, okay, sure, I am going to be a bit fatter. Um, I am going to have some more body fat. I am not going to be as lean when I'm bulking up. It is going to be a little bit uncomfortable to eat that much food. But that's just this one step, you know, and there's also benefits when you're bulking up. You're nice and fucking strong. Your pumps are insane. You're lifting some serious weight. You feel pretty good when you're fucking training because you're really pushing yourself. All those are pretty big positives in my eyes. And just walking around heavy, it's just fun. You know, it's just fun to really fill out your shirts and, you know, everything else. Like, being big in baggy clothes, that's just cool. And then, you know, once you've kind of gone through that phase, you get to enjoy the second part, which is when you're dieting down, you've got some shit to show for it, you know? If you're a total beginner and you jump straight to a serious dieting phase, you got to remember, like maybe a little bit of newbie gains can be built in a calorie deficit. If you're a total beginner to the gym, you haven't lifted before, and you start you know, lifting hard in a deficit, you will gain muscle um, just because of the fact that you're not, you're so underexposed to weight training, you're just physically going to get a little beefier from the activation of all your whatevers. But... You're not in a good state to build muscle if you're in a deficit. So to jump straight into a you know steep deficit, really dropping pounds right as a beginner, you know aiming for just a you know, as much leanness as you can muster, I just wouldn't say that's the best approach. You know, I think you'd be better off maybe main gaining, building a little bit more of a baseline first, and then once you have that, you can be in a better position to actually cut down and see some shit underneath. Now, that's a little bit of a recommendation, I'd say, more towards the kind of moderate body fat beginner. If um, if you've got to start your lifting journey as a fat loss journey, then that is a little bit different. You may be better off in a relatively solid deficit right in the beginning, just because you know if you have a lot of excess body fat as a beginner, that is something which you're going to be better off peeling off first but you gotta kind of be able to look at it from your own uh, situation and decide what's best for you and I'm not a fitness coach right? and I haven't lived that sort of experience so if that's you you'd probably be better off you know finding like a, a guy posting fitness stuff who did start off with a lot of body fat and you know worked his way through it because he's gonna be able to relate to your situation way fucking more I was more of a I, I started as like a 160 pound, like lean kid, so I didn't have to deal with um, you know, trim it down first. I got to jump straight to eating turkey sandwiches with like half the packet of turkey and then just trying to lift as hard as I could. I think that's all I got. Big weekend ahead. If you take pictures, make sure to post them. Tag me. I love seeing those. I, uh, I always scroll through. I kind of scroll through everything. I scroll through the comments a lot. Just seeing what, people, seeing what you guys are saying. But I like scrolling through the um, the Instagram too. And the, the tagged photos. Anytime I'm ever somewhere where there's a lot of people and we're taking pictures. I do like looking back at them. That's just kind of fun for me. So, Big weekend ahead. If you're going, make sure you lift. I could definitely see how you could go to the expo, walk around, 
and then get back to your hotel or your house or whatever and say, oh crap, I'm fucking tired, I'm out of here. If that's you, then maybe you've got to be like, all right, fuck it, let's go hit this shit. Lift you when they're tired. Or maybe just be a little bit smarter about it and say, okay, I know I'm going to be fucking dead after this. Let's just lift before I hit. So. If that applies to you, keep it in mind. Keep it in freaking mind. But that is all from me. So, like I was saying a second ago, home, food, 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 good night's rest, and then off to the expo. So, I will see you tomorrow and Whatever video that ends up being, I can't remember if it's going to be a lift or a cardio video, whichever, uh, but we'll see. So I'll see you next time.